and she goes by the name of the Hubble and I can bet my money on it that her music is literally the same as her name man it's just gold but before I get right into it I will let her introduce herself ladies and gentlemen hi Hey, hey welcome, welcome, welcome. Asante sana. Thank you so much for having me. To anyone who's listening to you today for the first time, who is the Habu? Well, um, the Habu is a lawyer, first and foremost, mm-hmm. a singer, songwriter, author, and a small, small entrepreneur. Lawyer. Lawyer. Author. <laughs> Author. Entrepreneur. Yes, sir. Singer. Yes, songwriter. Yes, sir. Wait, how are you balancing all of this? <laughs> Especially the lawyer part. Lawyer, man. Well, that's what I do full time. Uh-huh. Uh, that's what I went to school for. So uh, I've been I've been in the business for eight years. This is my eighth year of practice as a I lawyer. I have sworn you're like 22 years old. I know, right? I know, I know, I know. Uh, we thank God for good genes. You said so eight years? Eight years. This is my eighth year. And you professionally got into music about two years ago. Yeah, uh, December of 2020, that's when I decided to, yeah, tell the world, yeah. Okay, when did your love for music start? Because clearly it's not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not right now. So I actually come from a musical family. Yeah. So uh, music has been in my blood my entire life. Uh-huh. But I think I just didn't think I wanted to be, I, I didn't think I, want, I wanted to come out of the closet until 2020. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, 2014, I recorded my first song, yeah. sat on it, and it actually came out last year. That was the first song I ever wrote. Your music really sounds amazing, especially how you infuse Kamba, Swahili, and then you just add English into it. Why Kamba? Why Kamba? Because I'm Kamba. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I wanted to do something different. Um I think I wanted to differentiate myself from the market. Yeah. And I also want people to identify with me as an African. Yeah. I know we have a lot of Western influences. I'm very Western influenced. Mm-hmm. Uh, my upbringing, just everything about me. Okay. So I wanted my music to be a bit different. And so what better way to do that than to add a little Kamba flavor. Are you a fluent Kamba speaker? Oh, Or can we say it's the hymns you used to learn while you were young, so you're just throwing some bits and pieces into it? Correct. So I'm not a fluent Kamba speaker, uh, and I'm I'm not proud of it, but hopefully in the next years, you know, I'll get better. So you are very correct. Yeah, I do take some words that, like, I learned from the hymns that we sing. And then I just write, I, I I pick one word and I write around it. But you've loved music all along. My entire life. My Tell us entire about life. Golden Emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> so Golden Emeralds was a group that, uh, an a cappella group that we had in high school. And uh, Form 1, so I went to school, we were 300 Form 1s. Oh. I know, it's wow. crazy. <laughs> so uh, six streams and I was in 1G which is, I mean, I was in 1E, which is one emerald, and the rest of the members of the group were in 1G, which is one gold. And we're just in the field, and we realized we sound really good collectively. So we decided to start a group, and we would just sing in school, yeah, just for vibes. So the first track you decided to give us is Feeling. Yes. Why that track? So, um, uh, the guy who put me in touch with Elvis is Jazz. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, Jazz and I had been in communication. He's literally like the only producer I knew. So, he was the only person I was comfortable going to and saying, you know what, I think I'm confident enough now to try and do this music thing. So, Jazz gave us a track. And this track is actually produced by a guy called Young DLC. Mm -hmm. And he's Zimbabwean. Oh, yeah, so Jazz gave us a f- couple of tracks and he was like, you guys uh, can pick any from here and I think you, you will be able to write with Elvis. And sure enough, Elvis was like the perfect person for me to do this track with. 
And I think it turned out pretty great. It sounds amazing. And we wanted, I think for, for this being my first track, I wanted something edgy, something fun. Yeah. Because if you notice, my music is very chill. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I think... It's a being, very energetic track. Exactly. Yeah. So it was just, it was experimental. And I think I think it turned out pretty dope. Did you have like another one or this was the first one you like, you know what, I think I'm just going to start with this one before I go back in studio so i actually had the song that i wrote in 2014 mm -hmm. which is now a song that features steph capella Ooh. so that's the first song i ever that was had the first one that was the first song i had ever recorded mm -hmm. and um i i don't know why i chose not to put that out i kept feeling like the song wasn't ready so steph yeah. wasn't on it in the beginning oh, okay exactly so um so i did have that song it's called this love and then we had feeling, so I was just like, you know, I don't think this love is ready. Uh -huh. So let's just put out feeling. It's a fun song. Yeah. It was December. We had been quarantined. I'm like, people need some good music. People need to dance. People need to feel good. And that's so. it. You decided to drop a song mm -hmm. right in the smack of a pandemic. Imagine. When other artists are like, yo, what will I do? The hub is like, you know. I'm dropping a track when you guys don't know what you're doing. You can actually have this. Didn't you have any questions or experience any challenges, especially considering it's your first time? I think I was just nervous about how people would accept my music. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was my first song and I was just like, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. Yeah. So I just took a leap of faith. I'm like, let's drop this song. Yeah. I know it's strange. I mean, it's a pandemic. Yeah. I am literally launching another career while, you know, the Armageddon is happening. But I was like, <laughs> you know what? You just have to get over your fears. Yeah. Drop the song. If people vibe with it, they vibe with it. If they don't, you know, on to the next. Now you're, you wor you've worked with, an, with a Haitian artist and Steph Capella. Are yes, those sir. the only artists you've actually collabed with? No, I've collaborated with Elvis Who, and uh, there's a bunch of other collabos that are not released yet, and I'm not gonna, I don't want to spoil the fun, but uh, there are some very unexpected collaborations coming through, some very unexpected sounds, so hopefully, hopefully those come out this year, and you guys catch a vibe. No, it's okay, you can name drop. Just No, one, no, just I don't want to name drop, I just want people to stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Follow the Habu music. There's there's so much there's so much in the pipeline. There's so much that we've recorded. There are just so many vibes we've caught that need to be heard. So just keep it tuned. And yeah, very soon I will actually be dropping the next uh, track. And it's a collaboration with one of everybody's faves. So I'm not going to give it away. Oh, so you're just going to keep us on the edge like that. Yeah, I'm just going to give you a little, <laughs> you know, just stay curious, stay curious. Who are you listening to right now? Yo, uh, I'm actually listening to Love Damini by Brenna Boy on repeat. Yeah. I have Breezy on repeat. I have Wendy K. Uh, her new album, I'm really loving her sound. Um, who else am I listening to? Savara's album has been on repeat since it dropped. Okay. Yeah. So. I, I can feel. I can feel the influence also. Um, who did you used to listen to? Let's say because it's in the past while you were younger. Because I can feel some R and B -ish, early two thousands also kind of feel. Yeah, so I'm heavily, heavily influenced by R and B music. I grew up listening to people like Whitney, Mariah Carey, Alicia Keys, Destiny's Child. So um, I'm definitely heavily influenced by R and B and hip hop as well. I really wish I could rap. <laughs> Like, somebody needs to write me some <laughs> bars. I need to start spitting some bars. I'm a huge hip-hop fan. Yeah. I, I grew up listening to Eminem, Kanye West, Lupe Fiasco. Mm. Like, yeah. Okay, so. I can see. I can see your taste <laughs> in music. I can see. The, yeah. The track playlist. Yes, sir. After feeling, the mood changed. It changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us about playlist. <laughs> so playlist was actually written around the same time as feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, we, Elvis and I were actually supposed to finish working on feeling. Mm. And then Elvis was like, I think feeling is done. So let's 
let's catch a different vibe. Mm. So Elvis is also producing on on the track Feeling. He's the producer. He's the one who made the track. Yeah. So he just played me a bunch of tracks. And when he played the playlist track, I was like, I think this kind of sounds like more of my vibe. Yeah. And yeah, uh, Ben Soul just happened to be where we were at. Found us catching a vibe. Can I assume that you're slowly snitching on the future collabs? I, I don't have a collab with Benzel yet. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What are we waiting for, Benzel? Please. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, we, we all caught a vibe. And yeah, Playlist is actually the one song that everybody, when people meet me, they're like, that's my favorite song of yours. It's it's a banger. And it's also very relatable. If yeah. You know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> I hear you. If you like to flirt, this is definitely your song. And the music video itself is also amazing. Yes. Who did it? So we worked with an amazing young lady called uh, Michelle Donde. Mm -hmm. And um, I think she just brought her A-game. She yeah, she definitely killed it to the very fun shoot. Um, yeah, and it turned out great. Um, now, since you're definitely going to blow up, wow. listening to your music. Amen. How <laughs> are you going to balance being a lawyer and a proper musician? <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. I haven't thought about it. I feel like now it's manageable because uh, I'm not big, so I can do music and, you know, run my little practice. But I don't know what's going to happen if I Who's ever... Who's the first love? You have to pick one love. You know you can love. <laughs> Who is the first love? <laughs> Listen, you have to eat. And let me just advise all musicians, if you're doing music in Nairobi, in Kenya, you have to find a way to eat. And um, I think a lot of people who, some of your favorite artists have fallen out of love with music because music hasn't given them the returns that they expected it to give them. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. So I think it's always smart to have a place where you have some sort of bread coming in True. and then channel that to your passion. And then hopefully eventually the passion will start to feed you. And then you can choose. But I really love being a lawyer. So yeah. I don't I don't know if I can it's choose. It's hard to pick right now. Yeah, and I'm female. I think we're very good at multitasking. And yeah. I'm a multifaceted human being Oof. anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I believe I can do it all. What are some of the challenges you'd say you're facing as an upcoming artist? Because it's not easy being one in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think when I started out, I wasn't confident in my sound. Mm -hmm. I wasn't confident that, oh my God, you know, people are going to accept this type of music because we all know what, you know, mainstream media is playing. Yeah. And when you go out there, people have a perception of what you should sound like. So I was very concerned, like maybe people wouldn't like my vibe. Yeah. Maybe I'm too chill, you know, people want bangers and... I don't know. And then um, just trying to get the music to more people. Yeah. I think that's been very challenging. Like, you know, just trying to connect with media, network in the industry. Yeah. That's been super challenging as well. Why is there people you meet who tell you, oh, I think you should do somebody the other day was like, I think you should do songs like Nyashinsky type of music and in my head I was like we are so, we are so different <laughs> like completely. I am a huge Nyashinsky fan yeah. but I was like I can never channel such I can never channel yeah. those vibes yeah. I was like there's room for all of us I think there's room for different sounds Definitely. people just need to be you need to be open you need to be open um, I think Kenya is a beautiful market mm. we don't put out the same stuff um are you under any management or are you doing this all alone? I am solo and I think that's also another difficult thing about Ooh. about my journey. It's doing everything alone. Yeah. Obviously, I've got the team of people who I work with, my engineers, mm -hmm. the producers. Yeah. But after that, then everything else is on my shoulders, marketing, social media, everything. everything. So that, that, that is very difficult if you're out there and you're popping and you want to manage me <laughs> and you know the who's and it's who's okay. please talk to me nicely <laughs> but i think your music speaks for itself and uh, you're such an amazing artist Thank now, you. i want you to do the honors of introducing playlists before we get to the climax and the banger <laughs> 
of the next track. Please do us the honors. What's up, everybody? This is the Habu Music, and the next song is Playlist by the Habu featuring Elvis Who Don't Touch That Dial. How long does it take for you to actually create a song, or does it just come like that? Songwriting is very different for different artists. Yeah. And sometimes you catch a vibe immediately, like you hear a track and you start writing. Playlist was written in one day. Oh. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you get a track and you sit with it for a while. You, you know, you try to catch a vibe. Yeah. So it's very dependent on where you are mentally. So there are a lot of songs that I've written like in one sitting. Mm-hmm. And then there are songs that I've sat with for a while. Like I've sat with a track for months and months. And then the vibe didn't come. The vibe came months later. Which is the easiest track you've ever, you've released and which was the hardest? Oh. <laughs> and, and which is your favorite? Which is my favorite? So I feel like my favorite songs are not out yet. They're just sitting on my computer. Or oh, you just have them <laughs> I'm right just there? catching vibes by myself. But I think my hardest song to write was This Love the, that features Steph, Steph Capella. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just even when you listen to the track, like that's a really difficult track yeah. for an, anybody who's not done music. Yeah. For that to be your first song, mm-hmm. um, that was a really difficult song for me to do. And I sat with that track for a while. I got it in two thir- 2013. Oh. So I, I sat with it for a while before I was able to be like, okay, I think I have something. Jazz also helped me write. Yeah. And I think my easiest song to write must have been Chaguo, which is um, Mad Soul Disa's song that I feature on. Yeah. I listened to it and then I immediately just wrote my verse. How did you manage to get Steph Capella to hop on the track? So I actually requested. I was like, there was somebody else, there was another rapper on the song. Yeah. But obviously we had sat on it for so long mm. and the guy had just, his, his career had taken a completely different direction. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, I need to replace, I need to replace this guy and I need someone who's got that singer-rapper vibe. Yeah. yeah. So I just asked my producer if he knew Steph Capella and he was like, yeah, actually I could ask him. So he spoke to him and then I spoke to him and Steph was like, yo, this music is different, but I'm going to give it a shot. And Steph came and killed it. Now, in the tracks you've already released, it's very easy to actually feel the growth and your voice and also the songwriting and the skills, even the production, like it just keeps getting better. Thank you. So um, what should we expect from you before the year end? ends because we know the year is almost ending it is yeah it is well there's uh there's lots more music coming Mm -hmm. uh hopefully in the next two months uh, i'm going to be dropping my next single and this one is going to be a club banger oh wow that's all i can say and it features a very 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 incredible artist and in this song we're both you keep telling us this amazing artist this thing you keeping us on the edge. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm teasing you because I want you to stay tuned. I want you to keep it locked. Um, this is a very different song for both of us. Uh-huh. Uh, this is not like our typical sound. So it, it's a fun song. So please, please look out for that. There's, there's more music coming. Uh, hopefully an EP or an album. I'm not going to say when, but hopefully soon come, soon come. So we can assume that you're working on an EP stroke album? Yeah, I think every artist is working on an EP or an album. That, that's just what you do as a creator. You just keep creating vibes and hopefully when the time is right, you put out a body of work. Will any of the tracks you're releasing this year be in it or right now you're just trying to make music? Yeah, and definitely slowly? some of the songs that are going to come out this year will definitely feature on an EP or an album for sure. All right, you just released a beautiful, and I think it's safe to say this, sexy song. Yes, Right? It's very safe to call it that, right? (laughs) That is exactly what it is. Please tell us about it, because so far, it is my favorite (laughs) track. Oh, fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, so I just released a song called Ningwetele. A lot of people keep asking me what Ningwetele means. Ningwetele in Kamba means I'm waiting for you. 
This song is produced by a guy called Luso who's in South Africa. He's South African. Mm-hmm. Luso went to school with my brother. So oh. that is where the connection is. And Luso had just like created like a folder of beats and sent them to my brother. Then my brother sent them to me. Immediately I had this track in my head. I was like, this is sexy. I was like, I want this and it's channeling. Like I want to channel some sexy in this song. Even the video does not help. <laughs> Yo, you guys, this track, you should go on YouTube and um, every streaming platform, right? Yes, every streaming platform, guys. Run the numbers up. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. So um, I actually got the song in August last year. I have a question. Yeah. How did you write it? Is it for someone? No. No, it just came. I just, so I've got, I'm very heavy in these sexy vibes. I listen to a I can lot see that. of sexy mm-hmm. music. So it was only right that I try and, you know, channel a sexy vibe. It wasn't about anyone. It's just the track itself just told me this is a sexy vibe. Yeah. And immediately I was like, I need to, like, this has to be a sensual song. Like so, the vocals are also superb. Like, yo. Yeah. Yeah. So, so where can we follow you online? You can follow me. I'm I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. The Habu underscore music. The Habu underscore music. Instagram and Twitter. I'm sorry, Facebook guys. I'm not on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook for like ten years. So I think I need to get back on there. I'm also on TikTok, by the way. Yeah. The Habu underscore music. Yeah, but uh, please follow me on my socials because that's the first place where I communicate anything about the music. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so and much. And your music is amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And we'll that. keep a lookout for the next releases. Yes, please. And thank you for supporting. Thank you for putting us on the map. Thank you for giving us a platform. We need it. So we really appreciate it. You're always welcome. Guys, this song, it's called Ningwe I, I I don't know if I'm saying it correct. You but are. But there we have it.